Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks to Sonia and to Jackie for um, setting this event up and helping us over the last week to get prepared. Just looking at the picture there, I've certainly grayed a hell of a lot in the last uh, number of years. And to Jim, that was a good plug. But next time, if you get a QR code for your podcast, it'll be much easier for people to, uh, to get set up for it. Um, so um, I'm from uh, Maynooth University, from the All Island Research Observatory. Uh, so we're based over there in Maynooth, and we do a lot of different work in the kind of planning sector, economic development. We produce a whole series of statistics, mapping work, and so on for a wide variety of government departments and local authorities right across the country. So at the outset of this uh, meeting, I would, uh, at this session, I would present very similar uh, events like this to local authorities right across the country. Um, and Kildare really is in a very good position relative to other places across the country in terms of its demographic uh, set up in terms of economic growth and particularly what we talked about there in terms of housing. Kildare is one of the counties that has done really well over the last number of years. Uh, we'll, I'll talk about some of these as I progress through, uh, through the slides here. Um, we have a long history of working with Kildare County Council, uh, certainly over the last while on the last economic and community, community plan and the current one. Uh, we also feed into their county development plans um, and all sorts of planning initiatives across, uh, across the, uh, the county. Um, in Maynooth, in the uh, Maynooth Works Innovation Centre, part of the Kildare's kind of remote working hub, we have a spin-out company there, people in place as well. So uh, we're contributing as well also to the sort of economic base in Kildare to that. Uh, this morning I'm going to talk about uh, three main things, about the demographics in Kildare, I'm going to talk about housing, and then I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the economic sector in Kildare. Now, I'm not an economist. Jim is the economist, so I'll do my best to, to go, give a good spiel on the economic side. But the plan is to give you uh, a good introduction to uh, what, how things are working in Kildare um, and should feed into your discussion uh, throughout the morning. So to start with, um, the population in Kildare. So in 2022 census, the stuff that's just out, so we've just under a quarter of a million people now living in Kildare. So you're the fifth largest local authority across the country. Outside of Dublin City, Cork County, Fingal and South Dublin, you're right up there at the top. So you've more people living here, here than Dunleary, you're bigger than Cork City, you're bigger than Meath, you're bigger than Limerick. And when you think about these places across the country, different cities, Cork City, Limerick City, Kildare is bigger than those places. So I think that's lost sometimes that there's a perception that Kildare is just outside Dublin. Uh, it's quite urban, but maybe it's a little bit rural as well, but it really is a big place and a really growing place. Our elected members over here at the uh, municipal district level, uh, the, most of the population are in the Kildare Newbridge area, Clane Maynooth and, and the Nace area. So, Kildare is a big county relevant to the rest of the country. Um, you have an awful lot of settlements across the county. The CSO defines settlements of anything above a sort of 50 population. Now, that's literally just a crossroad with a couple of houses, so small little places. But what's different to Kildare than other local authorities is you have a lot of big urban settlements across the country. You now have seven here over 10,000 population. And that's an important metric because it means that all these settlements are eligible for urban uh, regional development fund. So big funding coming from government. And the big news on this is Athai and Kildare have now gone over that 10,000 limit. So in terms of regeneration and growth and future planning, that's a big news story for Kildare, particularly for settlements like this, which would have been maybe off, off the, uh, uh, the growth rate a little bit over the last while. NACE, about 26,000. You're the seventh, ninth largest uh, uh, settlement in the state. Newbridge, about 24,000, uh, 13th largest. So you can see other sizable towns within the county. Just below the 10,000, you have Kilcock, which is really growing uh, over the last while. Just under 9,000. Clain, Salins, and Monastrevin. So relevant to many other counties across the country, you have a big urban uh, uh, set of, uh, of, uh, of towns across the, uh, the county. So how has Kildare changed in terms of demographic growth? So Jim was talking about Ireland is an outlier and absolutely is an outlier. The country is growing more than anywhere across Europe. Um, population in Kildare since 1991 has doubled. So doubled in population from 122,247, which is 
phenomenal growth in any global uh, economy or global uh, place. Of course, the big growth in this was in the kind of early, the start of the boom periods, 1996, 2002, 20% growth rate. And it continued on that really high level uh, right through the boom periods up to when things didn't work out so well, about 13%, then it dropped off a, a little bit. But we're back up to the kind of uh, uh, the big growth periods now, 11% growth in Kildare in the last five years. That's the same as an entire brand new Newbridge town dropped into the county in terms of population. So an extra 25,000 people in Kildare than there was five years ago. That's a lot of people, there's a lot of services uh, linked to that, and there's a lot of, of, of work going on in the background to make that sort of happen. Um, at the municipal district level, just to see the tra trajectory of growth from 1991 to where we are now, you can see this line down the bottom here, the grey one down the bottom, that's the state. So everywhere in Kildare is way above the state average in terms of population growth. You will see Selbridge and Link Slip are sort of at the bottom because they're, that's a sort of an older place. A lot of the development was, was done there in the sort of early 90s, 2000s. A thigh, stag, still going well relative to other places, but much lower than your Nace, your Clane, Maynooth, which are just growing and growing and growing all the time. So the question is on that, how has things changed in the last number of years? So as I say, Kildare has increased by uh, 25,000 since uh, 2016. Most of that growth in Nace, Clane, Maynooth, Kildare, Newbridge. So that's where the big growth rates have happened. Um, at the, at just this map here showing the growth rate, so the, the orange, red area is showing where most of the population growth has occurred. But the interesting thing in this is to try and think about uh, why some of this has changed. But just before that, look at some of your settlements and just think about a, 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 you know, a town and a settlement five years ago to now. Nace has increased by 23% in population. Maynooth has increased by 18%. Kildare Town by 19%. Kilcock has increased by 42% in five years. There's nowhere like it across the country in terms of this level of growth. Um, uh, Kilcock is the, has the second largest growth rate across the, uh, the country of any other settlement. So, so much new development happening in the area. Straffan, Johnstown, all growing so much. So why has this changed? Well, there's two things that drive population change uh, in areas, and it's uh, the difference between uh, natural increase, which is births minus deaths, and then net migration, who moves into the county. So the graph on, on the, your left over there uh, shows the difference between natural increase and estimated net migration. You can see a lot of local authorities, the kind of grey bar is a little bit higher. And that's to do with what's happened over the last number of years to do with a housing crisis, to do with COVID. People were moving out of cities to other parts across the country. Also to do with lack of housing, uh, to do cost of housing. But you'll note Kildare in the sort of middle, it's pretty much 50-50. So Kildare has been driven by an accelerated uh, population birth rate in the county. You have the highest birth rate uh, next to me of anywhere in the country. Um, you also have a high rate of people moving into the county uh, relative to other places. Longford, interesting, is a real sort of outlier here where there's been really high growth rate or net migration into the county um, relevant, relevant to other places. Um, so who's moved into Kildare? Well, the dubs tend to move around an awful lot within their county. They move out of their county for all sorts of reasons. Um, so in the year prior to the census, 93,000 dubs moved within the county or moved out, but 21, 22,000 moved out of, out of Dublin to different places. There's a continual flow of that population moving into Kildare, and we'll talk about that later in the housing market because there's availability. So up on 20% of Dublin people moved out of the county, moved to Kildare. So you can see in the last number of censuses, the year before, you had about 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 in the last year moving from Dublin to Kildare and that's going to feed into sort of your economic metrics later on when, when we talk about some of those. So that's what happened the last time. So what's projected to happen over the next number of years for the national planning framework which is a number of years old now, the ESRI, ESRI and the Department of Housing produced these county level population projections up to 2040. This is done in 2016, so this is going to be redone now over the next year. But even at that point, Kildare was seen to be going to be one of the biggest increases in population over the next number of years, and it's going to go beyond that based on, on, on what they've produced here. 
But what I want to draw your attention to is the graph at the bottom here. So this is looking at single year of age from 2021, 2031 to 2040. And as Jim mentioned there, the demographics within the county are changing. And probably one of the, mo the most significant one for Kildare and for all other local authorities is your 65 plus bar chart at the side there. In 2021, about 28,000 people 65 plus in Kildare. By 2040, that's going to be 60,000. So that is a huge increase in people aged 65 plus. And of course, what we need to think about there is the services required to that. Levels of isolation across the county. Kildare isn't all rural in terms of housing. So a major change in terms of what's coming in, in, in terms of the population, um, uh, population uh, changes over the next number of years. Of course, Kildare is very positive. It is the youngest population in the country as it stands already. But these are just some warning signs in terms of aging population, what's coming. A couple of social indicators, I'm not going to go into too much on these, but the county is changing and the country is changing and it's changed dramatically in the last 20 years. And in the last five years, it's changed quite a lot as well. Uh, Non-Irish nationals, we have a very different community living across our towns, across our rural areas, across the country. And that relates to different services, different needs for education, for healthcare and so on. And even looking at the non-Irish national population in Kildare, back in 2016, it was about 10%. And you can see our urban areas have much higher levels of non-Irish nationals than other places. This will have changed a lot in the last number of years when the new census data comes out in the next month or two. And of course, the Ukrainian crisis, um, a lot of Ukrainian people moving to our counties across the country, um, so in Kildare, there's, uh, I think that was of June 2023, about four, fifth, up and around 1,500 in Kildare. Um, you can see the LEA rate at the top and the percentage of Ukrainian population within local electoral areas. Now, no Kildare LEA has gone above 1%. There are many other places across the country, like Ennis Diamond in Clare or Killarney in, in Kerry, where the Ukrainian population is making up over 10, 12% of the local population. So country is changing an awful lot in terms of, uh, in terms of its setup and, and its demographics in the background. Education is such a key thing for Kildare. You're one of the most educated counties across the country. You've access to Maynooth University. You've also access to so many other universities just outside the county boundary. So your connection to universities is very strong and a big opportunity for businesses. Of course, there are levels of low education across the county. And this map and a couple of others will start to describe Kildare, how it works and how it operates. The north metropolitan area, northeast, is the most uh, educated. As you move towards the west, towards the south, lower levels of education, higher levels of disadvantage, and so on. Uh, the opposite of that map, looking at third level degrees, PhDs, this is your main driving area in terms of economic, or in terms of education status, in your sort of what we're calling the metropolitan area of Kildare, in the north and the east of the area. Very interesting index here, which is used so much for funding for all local authorities, is from the Public Deprivation Index. And this is a mashup of all sorts of data on population change, on education, on social housing, lots of different data into that. Based on this, Kildare is seen as one of the most affluent counties in the country. So the blue areas are the most affluent. As you get to orange, red areas, you're seeing levels of disadvantage. It's a little bit washed out in the screen here, but you can really see the picture across Kildare, your north, east, metro area, high levels of, of affluence. As you move west, particularly towards the, uh, the w western part there of, you know, kind of Derrenturn, Rathanga, these areas, but certainly down towards uh, the Athai area, much higher levels of disadvantage. Of all the people living in the Athai MD, about 20% of the population there is classed as disadvantaged. And what's happening in Kildare is that there's a growing polarisation between levels of disadvantage and levels of affluence, particularly in the north of the county. And that's going to be a continual challenge within the county, but also for the county to demonstrate uh, that it's not all affluence uh, relevant to, uh, to other countries, uh, to other counties across the country. And there is this growing perception that Kildare is, you know, affluent throughout. That's not the case. There are high levels of disadvantage and some of your urban settlements, there's really acute levels of disadvantage within them. Uh, housing profile, as Jim said, this is such a, a, a big issue and a, a major thing for the future growth of the county. 
In terms of housing stock, Kildare now is just under 90,000 housing stock across the county. So again, you're right up there, one of the biggest in, in the country. Um, housing growth has slowed down so much over a number of years, but in Kildare, it's actually done really well, relevant to everywhere else. 2022, outside Dublin, you have the second highest number of housing completions of any local authority. Our timeline graph at the top there, about 11,000 housing units completed since 2016. That's way above anywhere across the country. So Kildare has done really well in that because of its location, because of, I guess, land and space. It's done very well in terms of developing and, and building houses. In terms of the type of housing, uh, you can see the difference between uh, Kildare and the state. You're kind of... Uh, scheme housing, nearly 80% of all housing in Kildare built are these sort of scheme housing. So if you think about the new estates outside uh, Kilcock or in Maynooth, uh, you know, these large areas, that's the bulk of the growth that's been in Kildare. Not so much apartments and a lower level of sort of single house one-offs across the county. Where they've been built in Kildare? Primarily in Nace, in Maynooth, in Kildare and Newbridge. And if we think back to our population growth figures, that's what's happened. We built the houses and they've essentially come into the towns and that's where the population has come from. Um, housing vacancy, there is an issue across the country as you know in loads of places. Uh, according to the census, about 4,700 vacant units in Kildare. This is very difficult and very hard to get access to these and turn these into operational units. The reason is, and it's very rare you hear this in the, in the in the public and the media, the CSO did a great job on this, trying to understand the reason for the vacancy. Why are these properties vacant? So if you look at our whatever 4,700 in Kildare, at the time they were vacant, so many of them were in the rental property, were for sale, were undergoing renovation, are possibly going through probate. So the, the uh, thought out there that this vacant housing, it's there to be flipped over. It is in some cases, but there's a lot of work for local authorities to find these places. Um, and to, to try to bring, bring those uh, into play. Note in Mayo, they now have a new kind of matchmaking service where they bring people with, have vacant properties to potential owners, bring them together in sort of a, some type of uh, coming together. And they, that's how they're trying to build that, uh, move those vacant units along. The housing market in Kildare. So Kildare is the second highest rate of property owners with the mortgage in the country. Okay, so you have about 32,000, four in every 10 households in Kildare have a mortgage. And if we think about all our growth in new housing in Kildare, and as Jim said earlier, 51% increase in, in mortgage inflation the last year, this is going to put a lot of pressure on some of these new households in Kildare in terms of paying their mortgages and so on, particularly in all your new build areas. Um, so you can see the north of the county and your urban areas primarily sort of uh, households with the mortgage and so on. Linked to that, of course, house prices in Kildare. It's one of the most expensive places in the country to buy, as you know, excluding Dunleary, which is way off anywhere else. Dublin City, Wicklow, Fingal, South Dublin, then you've Kildare. So you're right up there, fourth or fifth highest in the country. You can see your timeline, of course, is increasing and increasing, continually growing. Um, so prices are not coming down, they don't look to be coming down very, very much soon. And this is, you know, it's becoming more uh, harder and unaffordable to buy in Kildare in so many places across the country. The opposite side of that, where there's a lot of pressure on, on people as well, is the private rented market. Interestingly, Kildare, the private rented sector has dropped off over the last number of censuses. There's not as many people renting in Kildare as there were. It's about 15,000 now. So this dropped down a bit from uh, 2016. Um, on the rental market, uh, only checked on DAF during the week. Kildare is a population of a quarter of a million. There's about 50 properties for rent in Kildare on DAFT. So there's pretty much nothing available anywhere. Um, even at that, even if you can get access to a rental property, you're looking at the third or fourth most expensive in the country. It's increased from 2016 from around 1,000 up to, this is an average of course, up to 1,400 in Kildare. Big differences across the county, Maynooth, Nay, 1,600, 1,500, again, average, a Thai Monastery Revan down around, around 1,000. So thinking about that in terms of the cost of, of rental in Kildare, and also interesting piece here is on the people who are living in the private rented sector, and can they afford uh, to sort of pay the rent? In Kildare, about 20% of private renters are in receipt of uh, housing assistance payments. Um, so that helps them to pay their rent. 
And what's very interesting on this one, if you look at our graph here, you can see that in a tie, up at around 40% of those in the private rental market are in receipt of HAP payments. Whereas in Maynooth, league slip, it's only about 11, 12%. So you've got two very different socio-demographic areas uh, within Kildare here, the south of the county, north of the county. Uh, economic profile, Jim, butt in here if I get anything wrong, okay? So Jim's opening slides, of course, Ireland is doing so well at the moment in broad uh, uh, economic terms. Unemployment rate uh, at highest levels since uh, records began. Uh, opposite to that, unemployment rates at lowest levels. Okay, all operating at almost full unemployment. Uh, within Kildare, doing very well as well. Labour force in 2022. Now the labour force is everybody at work. Are those unemployed or looking for a job? About 123,000 population. Labour force participation rate, 63%, but the forced highest in the rate, and you know, much higher in the sort of your, your urban areas as you'd expect. Um, in terms of those who are at work, there's a, uh, about 114,000 people at work in Kildare, fourth highest rate uh, in the state. Um, only Cork County, Dunleary, Galway is slightly higher. So in terms of people at work here, Kildare is absolutely booming, and it's the, one of the leading lights in the country. But what's a fascinating statistic here is that I know the population has increased an awful lot, but since 2016, there's now an additional 19,000 people living in Kildare who actually have jobs and are working. So in terms of people living in the county who uh, are, are earning incomes and potential spending power, that's such a positive thing for, uh, for Kildare and for settlements and for businesses around the place. Uh, so it's increased by nearly 20%. The state has increased by 16%. So really big growth in terms of people with jobs in the county. People in Kildare, what do they do? So there's a bit of different story in terms of Kildare in terms of jobs and what people work at and where they work at because of the commuting profile. But the type of jobs, people living in Kildare, what they do, mainly it's in commerce and trade, professional services. And again, these are the high end jobs, higher paid jobs and so on. Um, but of course, we need to think about Kildare uh, as a commuting uh, county and it is one of the highest commuting rates across the country next to Wicklow of course Dublin people just flow around the place it's not really the same but Kildare and Wicklow um, you're looking at nearly 40% of the people living in Kildare with jobs are leaving the county to go to go to jobs elsewhere um, so one of the highest rates uh, in in the country um, so you have about 43% 4, uh, of resident workers people living in Kildare live in the county work in the county 40% live in the county, leave every morning to work, and then there's a number of sort of mobile workers uh, who, who, who work around the place and so on. Um, what am I, yeah, destinations. So this map here is showing where the real commuting bands are. So your north metro area, people up in the morning, ideally into the trains, onto the buses, but primarily probably into their cars, heading on the roads, heading to jobs elsewhere and so on. They're going to Dublin City, South Dublin, Fingal, Fingal Dunleary, they're the sort of main work destinations. Um, on the opposite side of that, Kildare is also a big, a, attractive county for, for people coming to work. Um, so you have about 20,000 people um, coming into the county for work uh, uh, each day and so on. So coming from Leash, South Dublin, Meath and so on. And so looking at where these jobs are, um, we know there's about 62,000 jobs, we know they're located in the county. So the bulk of them in your big uh, settlements and so on, Nace, Newbridge, Leakslip, uh, Minutes and so on. That's where the bulk of the jobs are and of course so many big industries uh, in those locations. Um, so what type of jobs are actually in the county uh, opposed to people living in the county working elsewhere? So education, social is big um, and of course wholesale, retail, transport, uh, uh, big sector, a lot of the jobs. Manufacturing also very big in Kildare in some of the jobs that are located within the county. Um, a couple of things here on the type of jobs then, so in terms of state assisted employment, so that's the type of jobs in the county, whether they're foreign direct investment or Enterprise Ireland jobs. So about 20% of all jobs located in Kildare are foreign direct investment jobs, so state assisted. Uh, relevant to other local authorities, that's doing, you're doing very well and way above most places across the region. Um, you can see this graph here showing the growth in state assisted uh, employment in companies and a big increase certainly in foreign, foreign companies, even from 21 to 22. 
So Kildare doing very well in terms of employment in foreign direct investment. In terms of the smaller level businesses within the county, uh, uh, business demography, this is looking at all your enterprises in Kildare. So about 11,500 active enterprises in the county. That makes up about 4% of the, of the state total. Um, the type of jobs here, huge amount of these enterprises are small. So they're really small SMEs under 10%. A lower number, of course, in the big 250 plus, but they employ a lot of people within the county. A um, couple of last things on income. Um, so Kildare, similar to the DEP index, uh, the medium income for households in the county, about 54,000. So well above the state of about 45,000 euro. But again, you can see the difference between uh, Selbridge and Leak Slip. Medium income, 63,000. A high, 43,000. So 20 thousand difference in household income between those two areas in the county. Now this is from 2016. If you think about what's happened since then, the amount of people that have moved into Kildare, have bought houses, are highly educated, have very good jobs, this is going to increase and increase in Kildare. So your overall economic proposition for the county is going to be stronger and stronger when the real good stuff comes out from the census over the next while. Working from home is of course a big thing that's changed over the last while. For Census 22, they asked questions on this for the first time. Do you work from home? And the number of days. So it's about three quarters of a million uh, people work from home across the country. In Kildare, about 40,000 people said they're working from home. Uh, this is about 35%, fifth highest rate in the state. And really different scores across the country. Dolneary, about 56% of people work from home. In poor old Monaghan, only 20% of them can work from home. So that is, relates to the different types of jobs and the different types of, of, of sectors that are there. Um, in Kildare, nearly 60% of people working from home do so for more than three days a week. So a good chunk of people working from home for most of their time. Um, and of course, linked to that then in terms of the where people work, uh, we have the stand down the back. We have all the sort of remote uh, hub network in Kildare. There's a lot of these across the county, not only in Kildare, but when you look outside the county, there are these remote hubs all over the place, absolutely everywhere. And I certainly feel, you know, more work needs to be done to look at these and the viability of many of these places. Uh, there was a huge amount of funding made available for them, and there are an awful lot of them uh, operating uh, uh, right across the place. So a lot of opportunity there for, for working from different locations. Uh, last thing in terms of the broadband network, which is critical to so much of this, as you know in Kildare, it's very strong and it's very good. The national broadband map here, you have your blue areas are commercial deployment, your orange areas are intervention areas. So where it's blue, you've got very strong uh, uh, networks in place. Your orange areas, the national broadband plan is operating in there. And so the map on the, on the left hand side there shows the work of the national broadband plan. And this is, it's a strange looking map, but it's, it's a much better colour scheme than most other local authorities. So the survey pending, the kind of light colour, that's when the National Broadband Plan hasn't even kicked off uh, in the county as yet. A lot of local authorities, there's an awful lot of work to be done. But in Kildare, it's certainly looking good in terms of the overall uh, broadband provision, even in some of the more uh, remote, uh, remote and very rural areas. So uh, I think that's more than enough for 20 minutes. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that, but if I was to wrap up and summarise on your table here, you've got the local economic community plan. There's a very detailed Scott analysis in that, strengths, challenges, opportunities and threats. Um, and Kildare Council and Susan Buchel and her team put a lot of work into that and it clearly lists out what really are the future challenges, the opportunities for Kildare between 23 and 29. So hopefully this will feed into your discussion across the rest of the morning. Thank you.